Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to Sister Wives with Mary Jane Kay. Today is the next episode of Becoming Sister Wives Book Club, episode three, focusing on chapter two, Janelle and Cody, where I will highlight any contradictions from the book to the show, any contradictions from back then to now, and any commonly referenced incidents, and of course, as usual, I'll give my commentary along the way. If any of my YouTube viewers could please like and subscribe, I'd greatly appreciate that so much. I have to say, I have been loving all of your theories and insights in the comments section of my YouTube page. I love it so much. You guys have the best theories and comments and they really get me thinking. And I almost died last weekend choking on my morning coffee when a viewer of mine came up with the most fitting nickname for Robin, Goblin, and I happened to be staring at my thumbnail um, that I found in a happy accident when I paused at just the right moment in whatever episode I was watching, and I decided to make that pause of Robin part of my thumbnail, and I just read the comment about Robin being referred to as Goblin, and I looked at that photo of Robin where she actually looked like she was expelling a demon, she looked like a goblin, and it was just so hilarious to me. I almost choked on my coffee. And so I used it as an inspiration to make the thumbnail also for the soon to come next episode of my rewatch commentary for season two, episode four, Carving into Polygamy, that should be out Friday night or maybe Saturday evening at the latest. Anyways, let's get into chapter two of Becoming Sister Wives, Janelle and Cody. As we know, before we get into this, Janelle is the wife who is probably best suited to the lifestyle of polygamy of all of Cody's wives. And she preferred working to being Susie Homemaker. So Janelle went to work as Christine did most of the housework and caregiving and Janelle brought home the bacon. There were two primary breadwinners to cover this family of 17 plus and those breadwinners were Janelle who I speculate brought in the biggest financial chunk and Cody who worked in advertising I believe in billboards now I believe he works in guns or gun related equipment at trade shows being the real alpha male he is. There's also the TLC paycheck, of course, but I just want to point out that Janelle did real estate and she does plexus and she has had steady gainful employment throughout the filming of the show. Christine has her cooking show for TLC plus filming and plexus and other side things that she does as well. Mary hawks her LuLaRoe junk and she also has a successful in other than the filming. But Cody travels expo to expo like a used car salesman hawking guns, allegedly. His wives are more successful than him, other than Robin with the failed My Sister Wives closet the family actually lost money on. So as far as successful money makers, Mary, Janelle, and Christine are amazing, intelligent, successful women who are able to use their wits and marketability to succeed. Robin didn't have gainful employment after marrying Cody. And she still doesn't. But Janelle always had gainful employment before, during, and after marrying Cody. And I think that's very important to point out as we approach her first section of the book. What motivated Cody to marry his first wife's sister-in-law? Did he see Janelle's intelligence, practicality, and work ethic? And know that to have a family large enough to populate a planet in his celestial kingdom in the afterlife, and on Earth, of course, he'd need another breadwinner to provide for his family since he could not make the cut single-handedly. If we remember last tell-all, despite Cody saying they were not in sync, and despite Cody deflecting to Janelle when the host directly asked him if he was in love with Janelle, and he answered completely avoiding the question, saying, ask Janelle, she will tell you she is not in love with me. Despite Cody's deflection and refusal to answer the question and Cody's betraying words, a loyal Janelle maintained that Cody is her best friend and that everything is fine with them, even intimacy wise, and that Cody is a great father, even though his older kids barely speak to him, if ever. We know Christine has said Cody views Janelle as his intellectual equal. But does Cody respect Janelle? If Cody truly respected Janelle, even as just the mother of his kids, would Cody deflect when asked if he loves her, if he's in love with her, 
telling the host, ask her, she'll tell you she's not in love with me, and telling the host we are not in sync, knowing that Janelle would have his back when clearly they are not on the same page. I'm just pointing this out before I go on because I'm sure this chapter will be a lot of flowery fluff and BS because Cody was trying to sell us a narrative in the book and the show that of course was far from the reality of what polygamy entails or what their family dynamic entails. You can clearly see the truth going back and watching the show and you can see glimpses of Cody's true nature even when he is trying to put his best foot forward. But it's important to always notice the clear difference between Cody's narrative and intention and the actual truth. We will never know the full extent of the actual truth. And I don't know that I want to know. What we see is toxic and cringeworthy enough. But the truth will always out and we saw it trickle out slowly. Until now the sink has overflowed and there is water everywhere. As Cody becomes increasingly more unhinged as the seasons progress. Now... With Janelle and Cody, what I feel could happen, and in my opinion, and this is pure speculation of course, is that Cody will use his same abusive and emotionally manipulative tactics, like withholding intimacy, neglect, lack of presence and investment, etc., as he did to push out Christine, and he attempted to employ these tactics to push out Mary as well to no avail. But I believe he will use them with Janelle, and Janelle has left before once. And I believe if Cody continues unraveling and the same types of manipulative behaviors uh, to coerce and control and employ what he perceives as leadership, which really is just Cody's ego running the show, that Janelle might very well leave again. Last season, Janelle said she had to do some serious soul searching to decide if this was what she wanted and she determined she would stay. But if it takes soul searching to find answers to if you should stay and it's not an obvious yes, then there are major problems and I don't doubt Janelle would be willing to work hard, just as Christine tried for years to solve all of her problems in her relationship with Cody. But Cody won't try and I don't believe he wants to fix it. I believe Cody wants monogamy. I believe he prefers monogamy and he uses his manipulative and abusive tactics to try and get monogamy for himself, to push his wives out. He only wants what is convenient and what is conducive to his way and his liking and his ego. When Cody wanted monogamy with Robin, he used the pandemic and his own man-made COVID mandates that were more stringent than the CDC guidelines that he knew intentionally would be impossible and too difficult to follow. And when some kids and wives of Cody could only follow CDC guidelines, he used that as a reason not to do things fair and equal and to be present and not to see his family. And he placed the blame on his family, on his wives and his kids, and on their unwillingness to bend to his intentionally impossible mandates. He told Janelle her adult kids should move out. They were past 18, and he did all he could for them. As Robin's adult kids were welcome to stay under his roof with her, and he was happy to help them because they obey his mandates and they respect him. Cody has different standards for different children, dependent on how willing they are to blindly obey and stroke his ego, and it's also dependent on the state of the relationship Cody has with that child's mom. Yet Janelle maintains, even though Cody's older kids barely if ever speak to him, Cody is a great dad. So let's keep all this in mind as we go back to the start of Cody and Janelle. Let's get into it. We learn that Janelle grew up in Bountiful, Utah in the LDS faith, the mainstream Mormon faith. Her mom converted to Mormonism after college where she met some Mormon missionaries. Her mom moved to Utah to be around people of her faith. Janelle's dad died when Janelle was just two and her mom remarried, but her stepdad wasn't too involved or invested and her mom divorced Janelle's stepdad. So Janelle took her childhood experience and from that she knew when she got married, she would look for a man who wanted to be invested in every aspect of their kids' lives. Growing up in the Mormon faith, it is instilled in you that it is the one true faith and nothing else will get you to eternal exaltation. Around the end of high school, Janelle met a fellow student, Adam. Janelle was taken with Adam, but Adam wasn't Mormon. She knew that they could not be together unless Adam converted to her faith. Janelle called her grandma to tell her about her crush, and it just so happened 
that Adam's family used to live next door to Janelle's grandma. Janelle's grandma told Janelle that Adam's family were polygamists. Janelle didn't even know that polygamists existed. She thought it was a myth or an old-fashioned tradition that was abandoned long ago. Adam was not committed to the FLDS faith of his family. So Janelle welcomed Adam to the LDS church. He converted and Janelle and Adam began a courtship. Of course, we know Adam is Mary's brother and Janelle's first husband. Adam wasn't very religious at all, but his polygamous family fascinated Janelle and she saw them as a novelty. Adam's relatives seemed normal and conventional and they weren't secretive. And they didn't do anything out of the norm, even though they lived a different lifestyle. They didn't dress strangely as the other FLDS sex did. Janelle writes, the women were strong and independent and had an equal say in family affairs with their husbands. I find it interesting that that was Janelle's impression of what the lifestyle entails based on a more superficial glimpse into that subculture. When she lived it herself in the current dynamic as a second polygamist wife, did Janelle still feel that the women are strong and independent and had an equal say in family affairs with their husbands? Does Janelle feel that is accurate in her family? Do all the wives have equal say in family affairs with their husbands? What about Cody's C-19 mandates? Did all wives get an equal say in determining as a family to follow Cody's mandates over CDC guidelines? Or did Cody arbitrarily create mandates more stringent than the CDC guidelines he intentionally knew were impossible to follow, using his other wives and kids' inability to adhere to his mandates with no say on their parts as an excuse as to why he lived monogamy with Robin. Were the wives' voices heard on the way Cody dictated his mandates? Did his wives all get equal say? Or did Cody expect obedience and compliance regardless of what his wives thought and voiced? And did Cody take his way and do as he pleased regardless of his wives' feelings? What about the move to Flagstaff? Were all the wives truly on board? Were all of their voices heard? What about when Cody married Robin and when he courted her? Did Cody take his wives' say into equal consideration with what his heart and little brain wanted? Janelle and Mary's brother only lasted together for six months before Adam moved out. They were incompatible on many fronts, but Janelle was enamored with Adam's family. Although Janelle and her husband separated, they remained close. She remained very close with Adam's family, particularly with Adam's sister Mary, who later became her sister wife after Janelle married her ex-sister-in-law's husband, Cody. Janelle was still involved with Adam's family. She went to gatherings, and one day she went to a religious fireside presentation with Mary in attendance. Janelle knew Mary, her ex-sister-in-law, was dating a young man named Cody Brown, and she was smitten with him. Janelle had never met Cody, but Mary talked about Cody a great deal. That evening at this religious fireside presentation, Cody walked in the sexy beast, vomit in my mouth, and a strange feeling washed over Janelle. The way all the women first described seeing Cody, they try to make it seem like a teenage rom-com type vibe thing, and it really infantilizes it like a childhood crush in a very amateurish way. I don't get it. Are we in 16 Candles or Pretty in Pink? It's so odd how grown-ass, middle-aged women are describing first seeing Cody. It's so cringe. Janelle writes, I felt as though I had forgotten something and suddenly remembered it. It was a feeling of relief and recognition, but I was in the middle of a horrible divorce and I had no idea how to handle the sensation Cody's entrance conjured in me. So I packed it away and made a mental note to deal with it later. The sensation he conjured where in her exactly? That's so creepy and gross. I could make a lewd tongue-in-cheek joke, but I'll skip it. They make everything seem like a deep fate, like destiny, meant to be kismet on a cosmic level, when all it is is lust energy, and there's nothing wrong with that, but they dress it up to such a degree and they glorify it like it's this deep thing when it's not. It's more of a lust and infatuation. They write colored with John Hughes teenage rom-com stylistic tones. It's bizarre hearing middle-aged women describe meeting their future husband like this. 
Before Janelle and Adam were formally divorced, they still attended functions together, although separated. And one such function happened to be Mary and Cody's wedding. Janelle says Cody and Mary were a wonderful couple, very much in love. They were like teens, silly and goofy at their wedding. Janelle never imagined one day she would join the family, but she did know Cody conjured a feeling in her. Oh, a strange feeling she never felt before upon just seeing him for the first time. She knew that though. She was attending faith stuff with Adam's family, but she says she didn't know she was joining the faith yet at this point. Janelle says a year after her wedding to Adam, her divorce was finalized. She lost touch with Adam and Adam didn't spend much time with his family, but Janelle did. She grew closer to her former in-laws, even post-marriage to Adam. Cody says even as newlyweds, the principle of plural marriage was in the back of his mind and in the back of Mary's mind. Cody says he had a sense in his heart that he needed to enter the principle when he was young. Everything is painted as deep and spiritual and fairy tale esque It was deep in his heart, the noble man Cody is, that he must take on wives young. I wonder if he was terrified of being alone with Mary. Mary doesn't seem like the most easygoing person all the time. Cody says he had seen older men marrying women who had been married before and who had kids and he didn't want to bring other people's kids into his life or merge his family with another person's family. Funny how that notion changed with Robin and he was just fine taking on her kids to the detriment of his other wives and kids financially and emotionally and he had no problem merging the families or adopting Robin's kids even convincing Mary to forego legal wife status in order to achieve it. And he even used merging the two families as an excuse as to why he needed an 11 day honeymoon with Robin as well. So it's amazing how being pussy whipped can totally open your mind to things you were clearly opposed to initially. But what Cody wants, Cody gets. Cody felt to marry someone with kids and merge two families would disrupt the kids and it would be uncomfortable to the ex-husband as well. Kind of like when Cody adopted Robin's kids and Robin tried to erase her ex-husband and rewrite history by taking a younger Cody in a picture of Cody with Christine and Christine's kids and having a drawing made of a younger Cody with her kids in place of her husband in her original family photo with her ex. Cody says after he married Mary, Janelle was always on the periphery of their lives. He and Mary knew Janelle had a rough period during her marriage, and they wanted to make sure Janelle remained close with Mary's family despite the divorce. He and Mary, along with Mary's family, wanted to look out for Janelle and stay close to her because they cared for her. He says he never thought of Janelle becoming a wife, and neither did Mary. They often invited Janelle out. Mary and Janelle had developed a friendship separate from Janelle's relationship with her ex-husband, Adam. Through Mary, Cody got to know Janelle and the friendship between Janelle and Cody was purely platonic, but they conversed with ease and Cody noted Janelle's intelligence. Janelle was always career-minded. At this point, when Cody and Mary were married three months, Cody went to an employment agency where Janelle worked looking for a new job, and Janelle helped Cody out. One afternoon, Cody stopped by Janelle's office to pick up a paycheck, and they ended up having a long conversation. And Janelle was open about her life, complaining about the guys she was dating, about how immature they were, how unsatisfactory those guys were, and a thought popped into Cody's head that Janelle should find a guy like him. Of course, because Cody is so mature and well put together, and he's better than all the other men Janelle could possibly find. The guy who says, rather than admitting he doesn't love Janelle, the guy who is willing to deflect to the host saying, ask Janelle, she'll tell you she doesn't love me, and I'm not sure I'm in sync with her. When Janelle calls Cody her best friend despite this, even now in the last tell-all, the guy who tells Janelle to kick out her oldest sons who refuse to comply with Cody's mandates, while Robin's adult kids are welcome to live at home gladly past 18 because they comply with Cody's every whim. What a mature man, the best of the best. What an option for Janelle. Better than any other guy she could find, right? What an ego-driven man to think he deserves a woman like Janelle or that he is automatically better than all the other guys Janelle could find. 
Cody writes, I thought I was the perfect solution to Danelle's problem. Back then, I was young and arrogant. I was also naive. I thought that I was everything Janelle was looking for. The problem is, Cody still has not outgrown his arrogance or naivety or ego. He's still just as arrogant as he was back then. A few months later, Cody and Mary were moving from Utah to Wyoming. Mary, Janelle, and Cody had spent time together to get to know each other better, and Cody and Mary even rented a home from Janelle. Cody wanted to see Janelle once more before moving away, so he invited her to lunch. He acknowledges it's inappropriate for a married man to have lunch alone with a woman, but they were friends. It was platonic, and Cody wasn't planning on courting her. Did Mary approve of this private date between Janelle and Cody? Why wasn't Mary invited if the women were so close together and close friends? Why was a married man having women friends that he hung out with privately for lunch dates at all? If this was a monogamous couple, would a husband meeting a straight single female friend alone, especially without his wife, who is already her established friend, appropriate? Would that be appropriate? During that lunch again, the thought crossed Cody's mind that there was something between he and Janelle. He told Janelle, maybe you and I should consider you and me. And Janelle was shocked. She laughed it off and she didn't give Cody's suggestion a second thought. When she got back to her office, all of her co-workers told Janelle that she was glowing and they wondered who the hot guy was who picked her up for lunch. See how these middle-aged women write this like it's a John Hughes rom-com made for teens? Her co-workers saw her all aglow and wondered who that hot guy was. So initially it said Cody and Mary moved from Utah to Wyoming and then they must have moved from Wyoming to Montana because Janelle says a few months after Cody and Mary moved to Montana, they went back to Wyoming to visit Cody's dad's ranch, and Janelle joined them there. Janelle told her mom that she was going to visit Wyoming with a polygamous family, and her mom became alarmed. Janelle says that Mormons in the mainstream LDS faith think polygamy is a terrible sin, and her mother may have had fear that Janelle would join a cult or be converted, so her mom decided to join Janelle at Mary and Cody's Wyoming weekend. Janelle's mom, Cheryl, was curious to meet a polygamous family, but she also wanted to be there to protect Janelle. Cody's father, Wynn, arrived and met Janelle's mom, and they had an instant chemistry. Wynn had two wives, but Janelle's mom and Wynn began courting. And not long after the trip to Wyoming, Wynn and Cheryl tied the knot. How, after a weekend of meeting someone and deciding to court them, do you then decide to marry and join a faith you were so skeptical of? Somehow, I don't feel this is the full story. It doesn't make sense. Janelle returned to Utah and began to explore the polygamous faith. She was intrigued by the doctrines. Did she just want to bang Cody and her mom married in and so she decided to convert? Or was she truly intrigued by the doctrines? Was Janelle intrigued by the Adam-God doctrine? that her branch of the faith follows that doesn't allow people of color into priesthood positions? Did that intrigue her? Janelle says all the men in the faith had character and all the women were very strong. That was Janelle's assessment. Janelle writes, It became immediately apparent to me that when you choose to follow a countercultural path, you have to learn to be independent. In other words, when you choose an alternative lifestyle, one that is denigrated by the public, it develops your character. You either wash out or you stand up. Once I came to this conclusion, I started to believe that there was something for me in fundamentalism. Is it a stand-up thing and a character developmental thing to believe in a faith that doesn't see all humans as equals and that doesn't allow people who look a certain way to be in the holiest, most sacred priesthood positions? Janelle studied the faith some more and she decided to visit Cody and Mary in Montana. She brought the man she was dating along at the time with her to Montana. He was of the LDS faith. During Janelle's trip, her interest in Mormon fundamentalism progressed from a curiosity to a calling. If Janelle knew she wanted Cody, did she bring the guy as a kind of flex? It's interesting how she was almost playing hard to get. And also, she is calling the faith a calling as if it's a deep destiny just like the first night she saw Cody's face it conjured something in her 
And it was like she remembered something that she had forgotten. Everything is so star-crossed and kismet-filled with a touch of 16 candles. It's bullshit to the umpth degree. Cody says Janelle brought the guy with her to Montana, and he knew she was hoping something would grow between them. Nah, in my opinion, she knew she was converting, and she wanted Cody the second she saw him, and she brought this guy to make it seem like all her eggs weren't in Cody's basket. Cody says he was hoping that their relationship would fizzle out rather than grow, and every time Cody saw Janelle and her boyfriend, he couldn't help wondering why she was sabotaging herself. She had him there for Cody to try and get him to move forward and be driven mad by the love he had for her because Janelle wanted to be the heroine in a romance novel. Cody says the boyfriend was an awesome guy, but he sensed that he and Janelle shared a destiny. <laughs> when Cody saw Janelle's man, he told Mary Janelle was getting in her own way because she doesn't want to let herself have what she wants. So she's dating another guy. So arrogant Cody knew he was just what the doctor ordered. Cody couldn't shake his spiritual awareness that one day he and Janelle would marry. So Cody assumes arrogantly that God sent him some sign from the clouds that he would marry Janelle just because his little brain and mind felt an attraction to her. And so it must be a sign from God. It must be spiritual. Cody says it wasn't a conventional romantic attraction that he had to Janelle like he did for Mary. His thing for Janelle was different. It was more of a spiritual and intellectual compatibility than about romantic love. I'm sure Cody also knew Janelle was very rare-minded and responsible financially, and she had a career and a strong work ethic as well, and she would pay for Cody's celestial tribe that he was planning to have on Earth before they ascend to their planet in the afterlife in the celestial kingdom. And Cody knew he would need a breadwinner wife. He was into Janelle's mind, but he was also attracted to her. Cody felt Janelle brought the boyfriend to test both of their resolves, and Cody felt they would share a future together. When Janelle left Montana, she knew she was attracted to the faith, and she was starting to think Cody might be her man, the right man for her. She admitted to herself for the first time that she was interested in Cody. She wasn't interested in Cody in a romantic way, but because he symbolized all the things that attracted her to the faith, she was interested in him. She was nervous and she wanted to take time to ponder changing faiths. She was just 22 and she had already been through a divorce. Janelle was always fascinated with the Native American way of life. She read and studied a lot about it and she was collecting art and artifacts that were Native American. She wanted to spend time closer to nature so she quit her job and she brought a teepee to camp in. She camped on Cody's dad's land and he had married Janelle's mom by now. She got to Wyoming in November and it was so cold that she couldn't last even a night in her teepee. Since she quit her job in Utah, she could travel to Wyoming as much as she wanted. She says Cody's dad took her in and he took care of her. She describes him as a patriarchal man who feels it is his duty to look after the people in his family orbit. He took Janelle under his wing and he told her it was his responsibility to find her a man. Gross. Why is it the man of the family's responsibility to marry her off because she's a woman? Did he set a dowry for her too? When Cody's dad wanted Janelle to marry Cody's brother. But of course, Janelle had other ideas. Let's not forget upon seeing Cody at the fireside religious powwow that it conjured a feeling in her like she remembered something that she had forgotten. And Cody also felt it was his destiny to marry Janelle because God sent them the signs and the stirrings. It was all God made and God approved. It had nothing to do whatsoever with lust or convenience. And Cody perhaps taking advantage knowing Janelle was intelligent and a workhorse who was very career minded and it had nothing to do with Cody knowing to build a huge polygamist family he would need another breadwinner in the family for sure. This was kismet and God sending signs. Janelle wanted kids with a husband who would make his kids the center of his world. It was very important to her and she saw the way Cody interacted with all the kids at the ranch. 
Cody was loving and fun with the children. He was very playful and energetic and caring and invested. He was very engaging with playing with them. And Janelle wanted Cody to be a father to her kids. She also fell in love with the lifestyle, with the idea of sisterhood and companionship, and a family that could grow in many different ways. So Janelle saw tons of potential in polygamy. Cody was the obvious choice for her, but it wasn't a conventional romance. Janelle was never into someone and into the cooing and cuddling and the googly eyes type of love. Janelle likes being independent and she's happy to spend time alone doing her own thing, so she never felt the need to bind herself to someone intimately. Her early failed marriage disillusioned her as well, so to her marriage was pragmatic and practical rather than something romantic. She wanted a strong husband who would be a great father to her kids, and she always envisioned having lots of kids. She wanted a man she shared an intellectual connection with that she could have long discussions with. She wanted a companion and a friend and a husband, and she felt intimacy could bloom from that. Janelle writes of Cody. Even though Cody was quite young, he was the most emotionally intelligent man I knew. He was leap years ahead of all the other guys his age. He was the best guy I knew in the polygamous lifestyle I'd become infatuated with. So why wouldn't I want to marry the best guy out there? How does Janelle feel now, I wonder? Cody is one of the least self-aware or emotionally intelligent men I have seen, in my opinion, of all the other examples of polygamous men who aren't in the more culty types of situations. For example, Joe Darger seems leaps and bounds ahead of Cody. And Brady Williams, I was particularly impressed with. He has a very high level of emotional intelligence and he truly cares about his wives and he's very invested in making the lifestyle work even though he no longer follows that religion and he's very fair and equal with his wives. He cares very much about his wife's feelings. He takes responsibility for how his wives feel as a result of the lifestyle. So I was particularly impressed by Brady Williams as an example of a polygamist man. And he has a very high level of emotional intelligence and self-awareness as well. Cody lives by his ego and serving his own wants. And Cody is also highly manipulative. He's a highly manipulative chameleon. In my opinion, he is able to read in others what they want or need and project that back to them. But he doesn't necessarily have high emotional intelligence. He is just able to read people and put on fake charm and charisma in a chameleon-like manner that can easily be mistaken for emotional intelligence, in my opinion. And Cody's kids are much more emotionally intelligent than him. Cody says Janelle visited regularly after her TP experiment. He and Mary lived in Montana and Janelle visited often and stayed over at their place. One day, the three of them spent the day together and Janelle asked Mary if she could have a moment alone with Cody to talk about something important. Mary went to bed and Janelle and Cody sat in the living room. She told Cody she belonged in his family and Cody was flattered. He was pleased and relieved. Cody had told Mary he was interested in Janelle, but it was an offhand suggestion more than a serious proposal. He felt it was more proper decorum or etiquette wise that Janelle made the opening move because he was a married man. So as a married man, it is considered inappropriate for him to be making moves on other women. And that would defile his relationship with Mary, Cody says. Cody writes, Quite often in our faith, it's the woman who approaches the family she is interested in. I think people are surprised by how often the woman makes the opening move. If a woman finds a family to which she feels spiritually connected, typically she builds a relationship with the first wife or wives. Then she will tell her father, who then speaks to the father of the husband in the family. Now, Janelle didn't exactly play by the rules, but since my father had been involved in trying to find her a husband, it seemed appropriate enough. Cody explains that he and Mary both felt they had been called to open their family to additional wives. They had been married for three years at this point and had three wonderful years of monogamy together. Mary may have had misgivings about Janelle, but Cody makes it clear she didn't voice any of them to him. She seemed happy to welcome Janelle into their home. They were still young and they didn't have the wisdom or the vocabulary to voice their deepest emotions, Cody says. 
even if they voice them from what we know, Cody would always shut down his wife's complaints or disregard their feelings and emotions anyways, as he did with Christine when she said she hated polygamy, when he became angry with her, or as he did with Mary when he was impatient with her and he grew angry and impatient at her jealousy and insecurity with Robin joining the family. Cody's go-to phrase to his wives was, you signed up for this whenever they mentioned any feelings they had in regards to the lifestyle. You signed up for this. That's what he would say. Cody says if Mary was troubled by anything, she wouldn't have been able to express it in a way he understood. Well, he understood fine what his wife's issues were, and he ignored them and he dismissed them and he grew angry at their emotions and he would tell them it's their problem. They signed up for this, so he understood he was just selfish and he refused to take it on like a man. It was not about the wives not being able to express their feelings properly or Cody not being able to understand them at all. It was about Cody's unwillingness to take them on and just wanting to dismiss them because he didn't feel it was his responsibility as a husband. Mary and Cody moved back to Wyoming to prepare to bring Janelle into their family. They had to find a house that was big enough to accommodate all three of them. Cody and Janelle started courting and the courtship moved very quickly. Cody explains that for second or third wives, the courtships are short particularly because it's neither appropriate for a married man to be spending excessive time with a woman who is not his wife, although apparently he had no problem going on lunch dates with Janelle pre-courtship alone one-on-one -on -one as a married man when they weren't courting. That was no problem. Cody says also because it isn't fair to the married wives to sit at home during a long courtship, and that's why the courtships are so short. They only went on one date, and he had worked a 15-hour shift he got off late and all the restaurants in his small town were closed. So all they did on that date was drive around in the dark. And Janelle's mother gave him a ring that belonged to her and he proposed with it as more of a formality than a proposal. Cody describes it as late, dark, and cold. They basically drove around in the car late at night with nothing opened on their date and he put the ring on Janelle's finger. How romantic to be proposed to late at night in the dark and in the cold in a deserted small town. Janelle and Cody married just two weeks later. They had a spiritual ceremony and they went on their honeymoon. They didn't have a plan. They just drove and drove with nothing in mind and they stopped wherever they wanted. What did Janelle get to cross off of her bucket list during that honeymoon, I wondered. Robin got a honeymoon where she got to cross things off her bucket list. An 11 day trip to San Diego where she got surf lessons and all kinds of different things. Did Janelle get to use a black light to check out the duvet cover at the Motel 6? Did she get to cross that off her bucket list, I wonder? Janelle reveals, other than the odd car ride proposal in the cold and the dark, the lovebirds hadn't been alone together until their honeymoon, other than the one time they went to get something from the cow pen at Cody's dad's ranch. The smell of manure and the mooing cows and the shades of brown, maybe a hay bale or two to break up the brown. I am sure love was in the air at that cow pen on that ranch. Janelle was looking forward to the freedom of finally being alone together with the man who conjured things inside her, but it was awkward at first. They had a chaste courtship and just one innocent kiss, Janelle writes. When a man is married, it's extremely inappropriate to have any physical intimacy during a courtship. So what about the weekend sleepovers at Robin's or the kiss at the engagement and the makeout sessions after that and the makeout session during Truly's birth? Here Janelle writes, it's inappropriate etiquette. So Janelle followed the standards and Christine as well, but Robin got different standards, funnily enough. During the first few days of the honeymoon, it was hard for Janelle to consider their relationship as one of a married couple. She didn't feel any closer to Cody than before the spiritual ceremony. They were friends who had to learn to be husband and wife. So it feels almost like a loveless arranged marriage where they have to learn to think romantically of one another and feel more like friends rather than lovers. Janelle admits she knows she and Cody weren't in love then, but she always knew she made the right choice and she never doubted marrying Cody or adopting the faith. As we know, even 20 plus years on, these two are still on different pages regarding their relationship. Janelle called Cody her best friend, and Cody essentially said they were together more out of obligation and determination. He said he wasn't in tune and aligned with Janelle, 
And he said, when asked if he loved her, that to ask Janelle, for the host to ask Janelle, and he, she would say she wasn't in love with him, he deflected. And it's basically out of obligation and determination. And Janelle called Cody her best friend. So that still continues now, where they're on different pages even now. A lot of Janelle's family were not on board with her converting to a new faith, and they saw it as Janelle committing a sin. When Janelle married Cody, she alienated her maternal grandparents and her paternal grandmother as well, and her sister even initially rebuffed Janelle too. It was hard for Janelle to come to terms with this new estrangement with certain family members, but Janelle imagined she would have sister wives who would at least, in part, compensate for that loss. During the honeymoon, the weight of all this was on Janelle's mind, and she felt pressure for her marriage to succeed, but she didn't know how to go about it. She and Cody had a deep friendship and a deep intellectual connection and compatibility. They were both committed to the marriage, but now they had to figure out how to make it work. By the end of the honeymoon, they both felt safer with each other. They should have felt safe with each other before rushing into the courtship or going on a honeymoon, but okay. Janelle says it would be many years into their marriage before their love story would begin. If it ever began, it is already over, and it is clear per last season's tell-all that these two are on different pages of different books even. The first year of Janelle's marriage to Cody was a huge struggle that she was not expecting. She lived in the guest room of Mary and Cody's house, and she felt like a long-term house guest instead of a wife or like some type of visitor in their home. Mary and Cody were still very much in love, and obviously they had a deep romantic love, whereas Cody and Janelle had more of a friendship and intellectual compatibility. And I feel like Janelle married Cody because she felt he would make a good father, more or less, and Cody probably saw that Janelle could be a financial supporter of the family he wanted to build. Cody and Mary didn't know how to incorporate Janelle into their lives. She didn't know where she fit into the marriage. She says when they would watch movies together, Cody and Mary would snuggle up under the covers on, under a blanket, they would hold hands on the couch, and Janelle would sit separately in her own chair. Mary was probably turning on the PDA and affection, and she was probably turning it up tenfold to show Janelle Cody was her man, the way a dog pisses on the same fire hydrant during his walk to mark his territory. Janelle didn't feel like she had her own place in the house. Janelle writes... Arguments would erupt over the smallest things, the right way to fold clothes, the right way to clean the kitchen. She writes, I felt challenged and confronted on all fronts. I lost my sense of self. I would have to learn to speak up for myself and establish my own life and status within our household. If Cody was truly a good husband and leader from the start, would he not have sat down with Mary and Janelle and made it clear that Janelle be incorporated and welcomed as an equal member of the team? I feel as though Cody wanted to live as he was in monogamy with Mary and add Janelle on without doing any of the hard work to make things go smoothly and without letting Mary know Janelle's voice would be heard as well. So Janelle had to suffer alone and feel isolated as a third wheel probably while she was probably footing the bill. Janelle says when third wife Christine came along, things settled. In my opinion, knowing how much Cody likes convenience, I think he married Janelle knowing she was career-minded and a financial asset to the family because he and Mary weren't into working and they weren't career-minded. I think he knew Janelle could contribute financially and Janelle and Mary got along and he may have enjoyed the intellectual conversations he had with Janelle that he could not have with Mary. I think Janelle may have lusted after Cody, but I doubt there was much romantic about it or too many feelings involved. I think Janelle was more infatuated with the lifestyle and she knew she wanted lots of kids without having to do all of the caregiving and the Susie homemaker aspects to parenting or wifing. So she married Cody and she saw he'd be an involved, fun dad and she wanted a dad like that for herself growing up and for her kids. So she thought, okay, I'll do this, I'll work, I'll get my cake and eat it too. But it was never ever based on love. And even today, these two are on different pages about their relationship. I think what Janelle brands as emotional intelligence in Cody is really Cody's ability to mutate as a chameleon. He can read what a person needs and project it, but it isn't necessarily genuine, and it seems like emotional intelligence and charisma, but really all it is is fake charm to get what he wants. 
He got a woman who can act as a breadwinner along with him. And she was infatuated with the lifestyle. And the lifestyle allows Janelle to work, which she loves, while she can also have kids and let someone else do the parts of parenting and homemaking that she could do without. So the lifestyle allows Janelle everything she wants in life, and it works best for her, and her world really doesn't center around Cody. Cody married Janelle for convenience, and he knew she and Mary were already acquainted, and she could serve as a major breadwinner to a large family with him, also contributing as a breadwinner. And the intellectual compatibility between them is an added bonus. And for Janelle, she can have lots of kids and that family environment she always yearned for growing up, and she can work and not have to do a majority of the parenting stuff or the homemaking stuff that she hates so much. So it worked for both of them, primarily out of convenience, really. But notice, even today, they aren't on the same page regarding the dynamics of their relationship. Cody is Janelle's best friend, and Cody admits he doesn't love her and they aren't in sync. So we will see where that will lead next season as Cody's behavior continues to devolve and unravel. That brings us to the end of the episode of Becoming Sister Wives Book Club. Friday or Saturday, I will be putting out my next episode of the Sister Wives Rewatch, Season 2, Episode 4, entitled Carving into Polygamy. And next week, I will be back with Episode 4 of Becoming Sister Wives Book Club, covering Chapter 3 of Becoming Sister Wives, entitled Christine and Cody. Please like and subscribe to all my YouTube viewers, and please leave your thoughts down below in the comment box. I'm always eager to see what you guys think. See you soon. Thanks for listening. Bye.